And welcome back. Here we have a Dodge Avenger and it has an obvious problem with camber on the rear tires. So from the diagram you can see what negative and positive camber is. In the case here with the Dodge Avenger we have too much negative camber. So we're going to go ahead and remove the wheels and have a closer look at them just so we can see what's going on. Now the problem that we're having with this Dodge Avenger isn't specific to this car. The nice thing about this repair is that it pretty much applies to every car out there. Now sure the way you fix the problem is going to be different depending on the way the car is designed. But fixing camber in general the same theory kind of applies to every vehicle. A few things that all cars have in common is camber, caster and tow and all three of those things need to be within spec. Looking at the inside of this tire you can see that it's completely worn down and basically that's just caused from the negative camber. So basically the inside of the tire is making more contact with the road than the outside of the tire is and it's just not safe to be driving like that. So we're going to go ahead and support the car now that we have the wheel off. I'm using a jack stand. Do not rely on a floor jack because it's not safe at all. Here I am using the jack stand underneath the subframe. It's a strong and safe place to support the car from. Now this car and many other cars out there have non-adjustable camber from factory. And the way they do this is all of the suspension components are set perfectly to be within spec using the bushings and ball joints and things like that. The problem comes with wear and tear over time. The bushings become sloppy, the rubber gets old and dry rotted, uh, ball joints wear out and things like that. And then it creates extra slop within the geometry of the suspension and that's where you start to get uneven tire wear. So the real fix for this would be to start replacing any worn out bushings or ball joints and things of that sort downside to that is it can get really expensive to start replacing everything so there is an alternative and that's what we're going to do in this video which is uh replace one arm which is going to control the camber on the rear wheels and that arm happens to be this one that's right here on top it's really easily accessible it's easy to remove and it's gonna be an easy repair. And as you can see, the front fastener came out pretty easy. All we have to do is take off the one in the back now. The one in the back is a little bit more tricky simply because it's farther back, but it's not really that big of an issue. The main thing you're gonna be fighting here is rust. So hopefully yours aren't rusted that bad. Here's a short time lapse as the sun just kind of moves around. So I thought that was cool. Now nah, I'm just joking, there ain't no time lapse. That's just me moving my uh, light source around trying to Trying to make sure it shows up on camera well so you can see it. <laughs> but same thing on this fastener, just grab your wrench and hold the nut from the back side and remove the fastener from this side. Now as you can see I'm using hand tools here because this is 100% doable with hand tools. But up until this point where I smashed my finger and it just really pissed me off and I was like screw this. I'm just going to pull out my impact gun. And really if you have an impact gun just use it. It just makes your life so much more easier. But like I said 100% doable with hand tools. I'm just clumsy and I smashed my finger. So yeah. Now I'm really glad that these bolts came out because I was doing some other work on the rest of the suspension on this car. And there was two bolts that were seized inside of the bushing. If that happens to you, you're better off just putting everything back together and taking it to a shop and let them deal with it. Because unless you have a whole lineup of tools at your disposal, you're going to spend hours and hours trying to get this bushing, this bolt out and you're probably going to end up causing more damage than good. Trust me, it's not worth the headaches. And here's the part number for the new piece that we're going to be installing. Now as you can see it has locking nuts on both sides and that's so you could adjust it and lock it into place. One thing to keep in mind is on one side of it in order to extend it you're going to have to turn it clockwise. And on the other side in order to extend it you're going to have to turn it counterclockwise. I know it seems a little bit weird but once you have it installed on your car it's all going to make sense. Now here I am just kind of uh, extending it and retracting it just to give you an idea of how it works. 
Uh, normally you just have to get it roughly to the same length as the original rod and then you should be good to go ahead and install it on your car. It's not that critical that you get it exactly the same length because you got to keep in mind once you're done installing this part, you have to take your car into a wheel alignment and the shop is going to fix all of this. They're going to get your car right into spec where it belongs. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is if your tires are already destroyed like the ones on this car, you have to replace your tires before you go get a wheel alignment and that's what we're going to do on this car. We're going to make sure to put new tires on it and then go in for a wheel alignment and they're going to take care of all of the adjusting that needs to be done. Once you got the rear fastener in, all you have to do is try to line up the front fastener. Now this can be a little bit tricky simply because there's only so much play in the trailing arm, but there's an easy solution to this. All you have to do is raise up your new arm and extend it just a little bit and that's going to give you the little bit of extra play that you need in order to put the fastener in. As you can see, it's what I did and it worked well for me. Now don't worry about uh, throwing off the alignment or anything like that because chances are the alignments are already way off just from you taking all this stuff apart and you should not have to worry about that because it's the job of the alignment shop to get the car back into spec. Now I deal with a lot of people and I've worked on a lot of cars so I could tell you based off of experience that people normally don't follow my recommendations. For instance on this car I'm going to recommend a new set of tires and taking it directly to a wheel alignment shop. But like I said, based off of experience, people normally don't listen to what I say. And I understand things are hard, money is tight and all of that, okay? But since I work on cars and this is what I do, I'm gonna try to get this camber to within spec to the best of my ability. As you can see here, I have this angle gauge and it's nothing fancy. As you can see, it says Sears Craftsman. It's not a special tool or anything like that. You could get it anywhere. So it's what I happen to have in my garage and I'm gonna use it. So all I did here was lift up the suspension with my floor jack enough to take the weight off of the jack stand. As you can see I lifted the weight of the vehicle off of the jack stand and now we can see what our angle is or our camber is and it, as you can see it's off. I want to get it as close as I can if not right on top of the 90 degree angle mark. So I'm just going to go ahead and adjust the sleeve here and there we go we have it at 90 degrees. So that's why I'm going to go ahead and tighten down all of the jam nuts. Now anyone who's paying attention or knows anything about this knows that I made a mistake. And of course I'm going to go ahead and fix my mistake at the end of this video but I just want to see if anyone noticed. So if you know what the mistake is that I made go ahead and leave a comment below. Like I said I just want to see who's paying attention. And now that we have the suspension loaded, we could go ahead and torque everything down to spec. If you're wondering what I mean by suspension loaded, basically you want to tighten down these bolts when the car would be in its neutral or rest state, just like sitting on the ground. But since we're working in here, we can't really put the wheel on and set the car back on the ground. So we have to simulate that. And that's why I use the floor jack to lift up the suspension. And it's again, it's just simulating the car being on the ground. And then that's the correct way to tighten down all of these fasteners. And now that we have everything tightened down to spec, we're going to go ahead and check the angle one more time before I let the suspension down. And as you can see, we're still at 90 degrees, so that's all good. Now I'm just going to go ahead and lower the suspension and set the car right back down on my jack stand.
Now that we have our jack stand removed, we could go ahead and put the wheel back on it and torque down our lug nuts. Now let's have a look at the tire on the other side of the car and as you can see it's just as bad so I have to do the same repairs on this side of the car. Okay so now's the time to place your bets to see if you knew exactly where I went wrong the first time. So here we are all set up again and I'm just going to go ahead and raise up the suspension. Uh, one difference that I'm going to be doing here is I'm actually going to be removing the jack stand instead of leaving it in place how I did last time. And here we go. This is what I completely forgot the first time. I forgot to make sure that the vehicle itself was level before I started making my adjustments. So you can imagine how much that's gonna throw our camera angle off. So let's check where we previously set it at 90. And as you can see, it's no longer at 90 now that the vehicle is level. So this is a really major role as far as trying to get your camera correct. You have to make sure that the vehicle is level before you start making your adjustments. So now that I lowered the uh, floor jack, and the car is now level now I could make my adjustments one more time to get me right back up to that 90 degree mark and that's it so with all of this fixed you can see a before and after it's a night and day difference as far as the camber angle on the rear tires so I hope you liked the video and most importantly I hope it helped you if it did give it a thumbs up and maybe even consider subscribing so thanks for watching